I do me every day. I take care of myself, I take care of my lady and my friends, and we take care of each other out here, and we survive out here. I've actually only been homeless for two or three months, and uh, I didn't have a bad childhood. I had parents that are still together. When I was a teenager, I started dealing with depression issues, and uh, that led to uh, eventually to drugs, and uh, then drugs led me to here. I am less than a year away from having a bachelor's degree, but uh, it was just very expensive. Just, just a bunch of blankets and sleeping bags, and we have a cooler to put the food that we get in. Really nice people come back and give us a lot of food and, and toiletries and, and, and things like that, and, uh, and I'm really thankful for that. Tents is just a community of tents of different people that are, you know, at the at a situation in their life where, you know, they're, they're on the streets and uh, it, it's better than being alone out there, you know, sleeping under a bridge or whatever. You actually have some kind of sense of community. Unofficially, uh, they call me the mayor. Um, I just make sure, you know, er everything stays calm back here and people get what they need. Of course, everybody knows where to find me anyway. When I first came back here, there was only three people. Now there's 17. You know, we used to have 30 people back here. And uh, it's just uh, you know, a place to go, a place to call home until you get out of here. My personal in-pocket income, I was making between eighty and one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year every year. Things happen. The economy happened. Fuel prices went up. I lost my contracts. The companies that got my contracts are still in business, and I'm not. I managed to hold on to everything for four years after everything started going bad, and then. 2012 is when everything ended. That's when I ended up out here. Any paraphernalia out? If not, I show them the house. And they were taking people to uh, temporary rental assistance, and uh, a pedophile got in there, but I couldn't. They denied me because I'm a murderer, so. And everybody looks at me, and that's my major downfall. They see somebody got bodies, and then you're automatically you know, you're automatically, they don't want to hear your story. They don't want to know. You know what I mean? Two guys raped my old lady, I whacked them. You know what I mean? End of story. Any man worth his salt would have done the same. I did 22 and a half years straight, got out of prison, was institutionalized. Uh, knew that I went in when I was 18. Knew nothing but, you know, what they taught me in prison. 14 years. Well, not here, but in the area, 14 years. The streets aren't safe, especially here. I had somebody open fire on me with a, with a 45. I don't. It was from about 20 feet away. I don't know how those bullets missed me. In this city, the drug the drug influence here is enormous. Um, <laughs> it's actually pretty bad. That's what I get to listen to all day long. So I avoid it by staying to myself all day. I, honestly, I'm looking for work trying to get out of here. I've been looking for work for two years. So when's the last time you were employed? Uh, legally? Never. I've never had a legal, well, yeah, everything's under the, job, under the table. It's not a good situation. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, I'll tell you that much. Um, I have family that's will t bring me back at any time, and that's what I'm gonna, gonna do. But you have to be mentally prepared. And I'm in the process of getting mentally prepared to do that. Woo! Uh, we buy propane. I have a heater, a uh, propane heater. I wake up every morning with frozen shoes. It feels like I'm putting on wooden clogs, you know? But, uh, and, it, and it's, it's freezing cold every night, but you deal with it. You know, you, you, you deal with it when you have to. There's a respect that you don't go in, you don't steal from another homeless person, nothing like that. He decided one day that he wanted my propane canister. So he came and he, he uh, ripped the door off of my tent that was locked and uh, took the propane out in the middle of the day and uh, took it to his tent and then left me with a uh, tent that I can't close at night. Yeah, I went over there and took my boys. <laughs> the dude you was just talking to, I told him, I said, look, man, I need some propane. He said, well, uh, I can't do it right now. I got to go. I cut his lock off. I went and took his propane. He came back and got it a couple hours later. 
You know what I mean? You gotta keep warm. You got you got compensated for it. He's the most awful human being I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and he stays about 10 feet that way. But uh, the other people, you know, they, they're in survival mode. So they'll do selfish things, or, or, but you know, you gotta, you gotta remember that we're out here with nothing. And I kind of understand where they're coming from, even when they do things that you, you would consider messed up. But uh, you, can tell, you can tell who's a good person and who's not. And there are a lot of good people out here just in bad situations.